Hello everyone, this is Mukundar Raghavan and this video we are going to see how to use the playwright for visual testing and what are the basics we need to know for the visual testing. Let's jump into the video. Let's try to understand what is visual testing. Visual testing is totally different from the functional QA automation testing. Here the main focus would be the visual aspects in the interface and make sure this interface is consistent for every user no matter which device or which browser they use it. So in that scenario, either you might be looking into the layout or styling or colors or font size or image or logo, everything has to be checked. And even you can make as a regression, for example, the given UI screen is not changed when compared to the previous release. So these are the possible scenarios you can try with the visual testing. And this one, as we mentioned earlier, it will be focusing mainly for the users and user interface. Let's try to see how do we implement this by using the playwright. Before going to that, we will try to understand if you want to do the same thing in a manual way. Imagine the scenario, you go to the Salesforce login scenario and you see this logo. So for example, let's imagine I want to make sure this logo is with given height and width and it should have the proper color code. How do we find that? Just right click and inspect. And here you can see it is showing the code. In normal functional testing, we will be using this one. But at the same time, I will give a just a tip. If you just mouse over by clicking this and you just mouse over, you can see it is showing the CSS path as well as it is giving the height and width 160.9 and 112.99. If you want to know more details, you just go here. And here you can see for the same, you can see that all the styles have been applied. So these are the styles and these are the padding. Since we are not UI or UX engineers, we don't need to worry about all this padding. You can directly jump into the computer. So here you can see all the information about this logo. For example, what is the color has been used as a background? What is the actual color in this logo? And what is the font family? Okay, and what is the height with everything? So in this scenario, you can get all the information from here as well. Now let's go into the VS Code. In VS Code, just we will see some sample scenarios here. Verify logo, placement, and size. Here I'm getting the page. I'm going to the default login page. And here I'm getting the logo. Obviously, I can use any of the locator to get the logo. However, after getting the logo, I want to get the height and width. So for that scenario, I just go to the, the same box so that I will get the outer border. Here you can see, even though the logo is not in the maybe regular shapes, you can see, you will see some box. So this is called boxing, CSS box method. So in order to get the box, you will be using the bounding box. Basically, you will use the element dot bounding box. Probably sometimes your element may or may not be available. In order to avoid the null, you will mention the question mark. So that means if the logo is available one and only, then the bounding box will be called. Then once you have that, the bounding box will be there. For this bounding box, you can have the width and height. So that's what we are expecting as a normal assertions. Here you can see in this test, we don't have any functional requirement. Our requirement here is to make sure the logo is present. And if the logo is present, it should be having the given width and height. Sometimes even you may need to see the color. So in that scenario, colors are something different. We need to get the all the styling part. As we discussed earlier, the styling part even you can see in this. So for example, this styling maximum times, maybe the font size, color or background color, maybe style, maximum width, minimum width, font family, alignment, everything can be considered as a style. If you go here, again, we are going to the same thing. We are getting the logo. However, this time we are going to evaluate that element and element will be the input for your, maybe the arrow function. Then you are mentioning window dot get computer style and the element. So that means that in this evaluate method, you are giving the element for the given element, you are getting all the computer styles. What do you mean by computer style? It's needless to say, you can see the same information that you see in the computer tab for the given element will be given to that. Now you have all the element under the style. This style is only for the given element, which is logo. Now under that, you are having all the information, but I just want the style of the color. Basically, you can get all the information. For example, your style or like say color, display, font family, font size, everything. Just to prove that, let's see, just style dot font. So you can see font family, font, everything. So I want to check everything that is also possible. But as of now, I will just select only the color and I am returning the final output. The key is or the property name is color and the actual color will be given as the output. And then all will be saved into the logo style. Now, logo style dot color to be again, I am not mentioning here the actual color name. I am mentioning RGB convention, which means that every color can be mentioned in the RGB format. Even if you want to know, again, it will be there. You can even look for the hexa code. For example, 
let's imagine you want to check in rgp to hex so some people will use the x code also maybe your requirement will be rgpa or your requirement may be the hex code for the same color what you are seeing in the screen might be using the hex code or maybe the rgb convention using any one of these you can validate inside your test class now here i am using only with the rgb convention now this is the one way and next one will be comparing the screenshot so before going to the comparing the screenshot let's execute this and see the output here there is no functional validation only the ua element validation and same goes to the next one logo color again it is also passing but let's imagine i am just giving some wrong value and let's see instead of 92 i let's give 93 and save it and try to run the same Here you can see the expected value is 93, but actual value is 92. So it is getting failed. So like this, you can find all the UA related visual testing you can do with the playwright. Okay, now minimize these two things. Let's go to the main one. Now here you can see, as of now, you can ignore these commented lines. Okay, now I'm going to the home page. I'm getting the screenshot. When you execute for the first time, it will try to create the image as the baseline obviously when you want to compare something you need to have a and b or one value to another value when you want to compare the screenshots you need to have the two screenshots when you execute for the first time you will not have any screenshot but when you execute for the first time it will create the baseline version which will be compared when you execute for the second time it will create the folder where your actual test case is present and it will use the test case name and it will use the some naming convention let's see how it executes as of now, I'm going to the home page or I'm going to the login page. I am just taking the screenshot. Let's execute. Here you can see snapshot does not exist. Writing the actual. So which means it is the first time you are executing. You don't have anything to compare from the previous. So then it creating the new folder with the same test case name slash or sorry dot snapshots screenshot compare test one the Google and Chrome browser we have used Win32 PNG writing the actual and you can close it. Now you can see with the same test name under the snapshots folders. Here you can see this is the image. Since we just went to the login page and we didn't see all the changes. Now even if I execute one more time, it will give the past scenario. Why? Because it is comparing with the same screenshot obviously it will be the same one. If you see any UI changes either by manual user or maybe the UI design itself change, then you will get the test case failure. How to make that? Let's simulate something. We just enter the username. Then we will try to compare with the baseline version where you don't have any username field. Now if I execute, here you can see there is a difference. Let's see how to see the difference. Go to the terminal. And as you know that it will be very simple. NPX, playwright, show report. Here you can see screenshot compare test failed. Let's go one by one. It will be comparing pixel by pixel. And you will have all the information, the pixel information. And here is the main catch. If you go to the actual, so this is the actual. And expected. This is the one. So here you can see in actual, we have the demo entered, whereas in expected, which is a baseline version, does not have any value inside the username field. If you just crawl or if you just use this slider, you can see the difference. And if you click on the difference tab, you can see only the difference, which is demo. And even you can download these images for your reference. So this way we can see the actual and expected and the difference as well. Now coming back to our actual test case. Here you can see screenshot comparison failed. So we can compare the screenshots. Sometimes it's a very smart decision that you take the screenshot of your entire page where you have multiple components. Sometimes it's a smart decision to take the screenshot for the entire page and even compare with the previous screenshot rather than having multiple UI locators and other statements. So in nutshell, what are the things we have seen? We have seen visual testing is something different from the functional testing. 
and it will be focusing on the visual aspects such as like a styling font size image logos height width color and so on and we have one more option in playwright which is the screenshot comparison by using the baseline version it will compare for the upcoming screenshots if you don't have the previous screenshots for the first time execution it will try to save the first screenshot as a baseline version later point it will try to compare with the latest screenshot with the baseline version and whenever there is a difference it will fail and it will show the difference in your report and you can see actual expected and the difference and you have the slider to see the differences so this is all about this video about the visual testing in parade so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day